Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our series on urban energy modeling with Dragonfly. And in this video tutorial, we're going to finally run a simulation using Urbanopt and Energy Plus, the engine that Urbanopt is using under the hood. Uh, up to this video, we've been working on creating a Dragonfly model that we can then export off to Urbanopt. In the last video, we created a GeoJSON file from that, that Dragonfly model, uh, which is what we need in order to run this last component here, this DF run Urbanopt component. Uh, so for those of you just uh, coming here, this run Urbanopt component, it's under the Energy tab of Dragonfly. Uh, and this is the actual powerhouse, the one that's going to execute the simulation for us. So, all right, let's get underway here. So first things first, we know that we need the GeoJSON. So I'm connecting that up to our run Urbanopt component here. Uh, the next thing we know, we need our climate, our EPW weather file. So in the previous video, I also had downloaded one of these for us to use. I'll just bring this over here. Uh, and maybe I'll make a little space because we're, there's actually a few different things we're going to be uh, adjusting on the simulation here before we, we hit the button. Uh, so, all right. So let's connect up the EPW file that I downloaded here. That's for Buffalo, New York. Connecting that up to the to the run Urbanopt component. Uh, and then lastly, there's really only one other thing that's required to run this component. We'll see if the orange balloon will tell us we need to connect a, a Boolean toggle to run. Uh, right, just to, to you know, say go ahead and execute. So maybe I'll do that now. I'm not going to set it to true yet, but I'm just going to double click and bring up a Boolean toggle. And leaving it as false, <laughs> I'm going to connect that up to run. So all right, this is going to be the final step, I think, when we set this to true uh, and, and set the simulation to running. Uh, and so the reason why I didn't automatically just set it to true is because there are some other things that I want us to tweak before we actually go and hit simulate. Uh, as you guys see in the Rhino scene, I mean, this is a pretty large model. I think it's about 150 different rooms at least, uh, you know, when you account for the core and perimeter offset uh, and the fact that we have all these stories. I think it's, it may be well over. Maybe it's closer to 300 if we were to do this. Um, but uh, importantly, right, I want to actually really have a fine level of control over how the calculation is parallelized uh, because otherwise if I were to run this whole thing as one big model, I'm going to be waiting well over an hour for that to finish. Uh, so, all right. So the first thing is first is that I want you guys to see working our way upward from here, uh, there's an input for the number of CPUs. Uh, and so this is what you can use to actually, uh, fit, you know, dictate how much of the resources of your machine uh, are available for Urbanopt. Uh, you'll see actually we don't, you don't even really need to plug in an input here because the default is a pretty good one. Uh, the component is smart enough to actually sense the number of uh, processors that exist on your local machine, and it will always set the number of CPUs by default if you don't plug in anything uh, to one less than that total number of processors. Uh, if you guys were curious about how many processors there are on your machine, uh, an easy way to check that is just to do Control-Alt-Delete and bring up the Task Manager. Again, this is on Windows. It'll be slightly different for those of you working on Mac. Uh, but if you guys go over for, in the task manager to the performance section, uh, you'll see in the CPU section, it'll tell you the number of logical processors uh, that you have available on your machine. Uh, and I would venture a guess, unless you're a, a really big computer nerd like me, that you probably have a lot less than 28 uh, logical processors on your machine. So I'm running this on a pretty beefy desktop right now. Uh, if I have 28, most like laptops will have maybe four, at, at best maybe eight. A lot of desktops will have maybe 8, uh, 12 will be the, you know, a lot of the higher end ones. So this is a very high-end processor that I have here. Uh, so my simulation, don't don't be discouraged. Your simulation may take a lot longer than it is on my machine. Uh, but uh, on my machine, it's only really like uh, like three minutes max, I think, is, is what it will take. So uh, just be wary. You're going to be waiting a while for it to finish on your end, but that's totally fine uh, just because machines are different. Uh, you know, and they're different, uh, have different levels of processing power. Uh, so, all right, I'm going to leave this by default. But again, uh, you know, if you do want to plug in a value for this, it's never going to be worthwhile to plug in anything larger than your number of logical processes on your machine. Uh, because at that point, right, you're just needlessly, you know, subdividing the model, uh, at, you know, for only to be dealt with after those, those logical processors, you know. Uh, have finished computing it. So this number, if you're going to plug in something, it should always be less than your CPUs. Also, in this case, actually, I'm not even going to get the opportunity to use all my CPUs because we only have 13 buildings in this model, uh, right, which is less than the 28 processors. 
Uh, and so you can't really run more than one building on a uh, per CPU when you're when you're using UrbanOpt uh, to run your simulation. Um, so again, those are the rules of that. I'll leave it as default for now. Uh, there are some other options here to really customize, like you know the output reports. Uh, I, we're going to cover these in a later uh, video of what mappers and measures are. Uh, but the one that I really want to change right now, in order to make sure that my simulation runs nice and fast, are these simulation parameters. So. Uh, and I also want to customize this to make sure I get out the results of the simulation that I want. Uh, and in particular, I'm mostly concerned about getting out uh, the electricity and fuel broken down by different end uses of cooling, heating, uh, lighting, you know, equipment, etc. Uh, so, all right. So I'm going to use uh, all the components that you use to customize the simulation parameters live in the Honeybee Energy tab under the Simulate section. Uh, and in particular, the SIMPAR input is meant to take the output of another component called HP Simulation Parameter. So I'm going to drop this component on my canvas. And you'll see this allows us to customize the north or the output, the run period. Um, you know, going down this list, actually, the output is one of the first things that I want to customize because, uh, again, I really only care about uh, the, those, those energy uses. I don't need other things like surface temperatures for my model, which are only going to take longer to. Um, to process. Uh, so I'm going to customize the output here. What I can do for that is grab a component called HB Simulation Output. And this will have a few different classes uh, or groups of outputs that you can request from Energy Plus. Um, probably the two that I care about most are zone energies and HVAC energies. I'm not interested right now in doing a whole energy balance of gains and losses or looking at thermal comfort. So I'm just going to double click and bring up a Boolean toggle. I'll connect that both to zone energy use and HVAC energy use, and I'm going to set this to true. Uh, and out of this, then I'm going to get a simulation output object that I can then connect to my simulation parameters. So, okay. So I know what I'm requesting now. I'm not requesting anything superfluous that I don't need. Uh, but one other thing uh, that will make it much easier to process these results, you can imagine if we're getting, you know, lighting energy use for every single one of these, you know, over 100 zones that we have here, that's going to be a lot of data, especially if it's, you know, hourly data for, you know, every single hour of the year for every single one of those rooms. So to make things a little simple, I'm going to change the reporting frequency to just be monthly. So this way, I'm never going to get more than 12 values per room. It'll make it a little faster and easier to process this amount of data. So in order to do that, I'm just going to double click the, on the Grasshopper Canvas, uh, do a double quote to put it in a panel, and then type monthly. Okay. And we'll connect that up to the reporting frequency. All right, and that'll that'll help me, you know, that'll minimize the total amount of data that I have to deal with at the end. Uh, but you know, it should still give me enough to understand like when the heating and cooling is happening, which is mostly what I'm concerned about here. Uh, all right, I think we're good on output there. Run period, I'm going to leave as default. That's um, you know, uh, that that'll just be for the whole year. We have some other things here, daylight savings. Uh, Maybe, let's see, one other thing I'd like to customize. So a lot of the simulation time of Energy Plus is taken up by what's called the shadow calculation. Uh, so this is how basically Energy Plus figures out what is in shadow versus sun. Uh, and you can imagine that is a very big impact on the solar gains in the space and, the, you know, as a result of that, the amount of cooling and heating that you need. Uh, so I want to use a slightly simpler type of shadow calculation here. Uh, because honestly, I mean, I'm much more concerned about getting, you know, just an overall picture of what the energy use of this district is. Uh, it's not like I need the shadows to be accurate down to the every, you know, individual interior surface. I'm not, I'm not doing an indoor comfort study where I might need something like that. So in order to customize this, I'm going to grab a component called HP Shadow Calculation. I'll just drag and drop this onto the canvas. Uh, and you'll see that this component outputs what we need, what we need to input into the, our simulation parameters here. So maybe I'll just go ahead and connect that right now. Uh, and so the critical thing that I want to change here is this thing called solar distribution. So this is what allows us to say, like, you know, I can do very minimal shadowing, which is maybe actually a little too simple for, for what I need in this case. It almost means like there's no, no shadows cast at all, but I'd still like to take that into account. Then there's full exterior, and that sounds actually pretty close to what I need to get accurate energy use because, I mean, I want to make sure that the, the sun falling on the window is correct, uh, but I don't necessarily care that much about how, you know, the, the light might bounce around on the interior. So these other ones like full interior and exterior, full exterior with reflections, uh, I mean, yeah, they, they might be nice, but I think I'll be good with just full exterior. So 
I'm going to uh, double click the canvas, uh, pull up a panel and type full exterior. And that's all one word. Uh, I could also use, by the way, just the an integer. If you're feeling lazy, you can just plug in a one. Uh, but I like being explicit and uh, typing out the name full exterior. Uh, but in any case, right, so this will now uh, make sure that we're, we're, our solar distribution is just that simpler uh, simpler way to run it, uh, which should make our, ca our calculation a little bit faster uh, than it would be otherwise by default. So, all right, maybe I'll, I'm going to group all these simulation parameters together. And again, I'm going to make a little more space, move this visualization stuff off to the side. Okay, so I think my simple parameters are good. There's nothing really else that I want to change here. Uh, I'm going to connect these up to the SimPAR input of our, our run urban ops component. And I think we're all good now. We have, yeah, we have our GeoJSON. We have our EPW file. We have our simulation parameters set up in a way uh, that the simulation shouldn't take forever on our end. Uh, so one thing I want you guys to be aware of, right, like I'm barely using all of my 28 processors right now. Uh, but when when I set this toggle to true, you guys should see uh, a big jump up in the utilization of your CPUs. Uh, so it might be nice if you guys don't have the task manager up already in the performance section. Uh, it might be cool to watch this uh, if you're interested. So, all right. So I think we're ready. We're ready to finally <laughs> push the button and see, see it go. So I'm going to double click this false and set it to true. And you guys will see a window will pop up. And it will uh, it'll basically tell you, you know, there'll be some information about UrbanOp, the UrbanOp simulation progress. Uh, the very first time that you run it, it's going to download a few uh, uh, dependencies to your machine. So you, you do have to be connected to the Internet at least the first time that you run uh, the UrbanOps component for a given project. Uh, you know, if you keep running iterations after this in the same folder, which you can actually see here is, uh, uh, you know, New Buffalo District. Uh, you know, then, uh, then, you know, that'll be fine. It doesn't need to download them, but that's what's essentially happening right now is that we're getting a download of some of the dependencies should never take more than a minute, um, you know, with, with your internet connection, but you do need to be connected to the internet. Uh, so I'm just going to fast forward, right? We'll see. I mean, a little bit more of my CPUs are being used, but it's not really jumped up yet to run, you know, each and every one of those 13 buildings in parallel. So I'm just going to fast forward through the, uh, the download process here. Uh, until we get to the exciting part. Okay, and so the simulation has kicked off, right? You actually see each of the, the different buildings uh, being output here. And suddenly we see this big jump in CPUs. Right now we're really making use of this, uh, this beefy desktop that I have here. Uh, so right, so it's gonna now, it's running Energy Plus. It's executing the simulation to uh, in order to give us results. Uh, and this is going to run, as I said, for about like two to three minutes on my machine. Uh, again, it could be a little longer on yours, but uh, I'm just going to fast forward this uh, so that uh, you guys can see the results at the very end of this. Okay, everyone, we're coming to the end of the simulation here. And I just want to point out, if you haven't already figured out, this done result equals true. Each of those refers to a building that has completed simulation. Uh, so that's that's why when we see 13 of those uh, in a row there, that'll indicate to us that, uh, that the simulation is finally completed. Uh, and you see certainly the number of CPUs has dropped over the course of the simulation. Uh, right, we're now almost back down to where we, where we started from. So I think there's only one building left to simulate. Uh, and then we can take a look at some of the results that we have here. All right, and the simulation has finished. All right, back to our normal CPU amounts. Uh, and I want you guys to see, you know, we're gonna we're not gonna really visualize any of these results in this uh, in this uh, video here. But I want you guys to be aware of the different outputs that we have from this component. So I'm just gonna pull up a panel, uh, and we're just gonna go over, you know, how they differ from running uh, a normal energy simulation with Honeybee, for example. So we have a path to a scenario file. So this is a particular uh, uh, UrbanOp SDK CSV file type um, that basically says which uh, which set of instructions are used to translate each building. Uh, I mean, in all of your cases, this is pretty much going to be just Honeybee scenario when you run your uh, uh, your your models from uh, Ladybug Tools and Dragonfly, as we've done here. Uh, so again, so that's uh, really specific to that. If you guys end up learning more about the UrbanOp SDK, though, that you'll learn more about what scenarios are. Uh, 
then we have an, the OSM output. So the OSM, you'll see it's a list of outputs. And this gives you a little bit of insight into how the calculation was actually run. So we have, for each building in our model, right, we have a separate Open Studio model. And so these are Open Studio models that you can, uh, you know, preview in the uh, Open Studio application. Uh, you can edit them with the Open Studio SDK, right? So uh, this is how exactly things are being transited under the hood. That every every one of our models is is being exported to OSM, and then those OSMs are being translated into IDF files that are basically that's the native format of Energy Plus, uh, right? That is that is ultimately being consumed by Energy Plus to execute the simulation. So that does it for kind of like the simulation inputs. From here on out, we get simulation outputs. So we have SQL files. SQLs are what they're, you know, short for SQL Lite. Uh, and these files essentially contain all of the simulation results. I mean, virtually all the simulation results. There are a few things that they don't have. Uh, but you'll see that we have one SQL for each building. Uh, and uh, in the next video, probably this is what we're going to spend most of our time working with. We're going to parse the data out of these SQL files uh, so we can analyze it and visualize it within the uh, within the Rhino scene and, and sort of get a sense of how, how good our urban design is right now. Uh, and then there are a few other outputs, things like uh, zone sizing CSVs. If you're curious as to what, uh, you know, you, uh, looking at the buildings over the design day, this, would, this is what you look at. RDDs are just the result data dictionary. This, these list for all list all the possible outputs you can request in the simulation come in these. Uh, they're not really too useful for our purposes here. And then there's an HTML report uh, that Energy Plus outputs uh, that will have summaries for each of these buildings if you want to dig a little more into the weeds. But, but you know, if we want, really want to dig in the weeds, we can do a lot of this within Grasshopper because we're in a scripting interface. We have all these uh, powerful math tools uh, to process this data. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. I hope you're as excited as I am, uh, and I will see you then.